uh, the, the computer on the pay-per-view and the TV on the sports. Right. Right. So I was watching both things. Um, so double or nothing. Did you watch double or nothing? Yes, I did. Yeah. I watched it as it happened. Which is okay. Um, can I tell you the main takeaway again from this, from this thing before we get into anything, uh-huh. bro, it's too long. Oh, too, long, too long, yeah. And there's I, matches that I, shouldn't I, even have have happened. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna pop when we get to a certain point in this. Okay? All right, all right. So, but let me say one thing. I was absolutely. Did you see this, Joe? Yes. Okay. Let me see if you notice this. Did you do? Okay. Did you fast forward just to the match and stuff, bro? I don't know why they don't do this every week. They had good packages. Yeah. On this show. And I, I tweeted that. I'm like, why are these packages not on the regular show? This is how their packages should be. Not 45 seconds. A good three-minute package explaining the story. You need to do that every week with your weekly TV, not just before the pay-per-view match. And I think they put a lot you know of that, they put a lot of that stuff on the YouTube. Oh, did they really put, yeah. put a lot of it on YouTube? Yeah. It needs bro. I, well, well, why is it not on the main show? That's good content. Because you know? they need so, time. They need time for all the matches. So for some reason, the 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 pre-show opens up. Um, and they they just showed that they claim come out with the guns and they cut a promo and that was it. They just sang and it was a comedy. Uh, so pre-taped Eddie Kings and Kale out. Right, I got I got a lot to say about a lot of stuff on this show. All right, a pre-taped Eddie Kings and promo aired and Kingston King took a shot of whiskey and said he was trying to drown his demons. He said he didn't know how he would act or what he would do on Sunday and added that he doesn't even know the rules of the match. Kingston said Jericho brought him back to a place where he's drinking, doesn't talk to people, and sits in a dark room and thinks bad thoughts. Cool. Kingston said Jericho yeah, like- burned his face and he said he doesn't want to wrestle because he's terrified of what he's going to do to Jericho and his teammates. And Kingston said he's hurt people his entire life. Can I stop I'm- you there for one second? Go ahead. You know, if you're going to reference that your face got burnt, shouldn't your face have a patch or <laughs> something? I've, I've, you look absolutely normal to me, dude. But Another problem with that is let me let me finish guys yeah, let me yeah, finish yeah. this yeah. and then we'll talk because you'll you're gonna pop when I say right. <laughs> Kingston said Jericho burned his face. He said he doesn't want to wrestle because he's terrified of what he's gonna do to Jericho and his teammates. And Kingston said he's hurt people's entire life. And now Jericho's brought the demon back. Kingston dropped the whiskey bottle on the ground and said he's going back to what is comfortable, which is burying Jericho and hurting him. Kingston told Jericho he'd find out what he lived in fear of, of himself and why no company wanted him. And Kingston said this is also on Tony Khan because he could have stopped him from becoming this. Kingston said he drinks to his own demons, but they know how to swim. All right. I, I, I felt the exact same thing you did because I was going, wow, this is like a really serious promo thing to go, but, but, but well, what did they really do to him? Like you, right. you, like you said, your face, you're not showing scars. You're talking about like, like, right. it was like all of a sudden this got this promo got elevated in this angle, which I think has been just kind of silly because all they do is just attack each other and beat each other up. But it's like it hasn't like the seriousness of this didn't elevate to this promo, but this promo elevated the seriousness of the match. But like I was saying, though, would have been much better if he was like, if he had scars on his face because he was talking about how this made how you burnt my face and this made me. If he was like in a really dark place, he would have like his face would be disfigured a little bit, right. or at least selling it, or, or something. have you some know, gauze over his half right. his face, or you know, right. you know, it's like a, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like a, Terry a Funk very wrap around bandage. It's like you're talking this seriously, but it's like I'm looking at you as like you're talking about being burnt. You're not even you don't, you don't look like you've been burnt, which is you a know? shame because <laughs> the promo was great. Yeah. You know, the right. guy's a very good promo because he has a right. well defined character that people actually believe in. Okay, mm-hmm. right. which is not easy nowadays because people that know people that wait, wait let me uh, people that know Eddie Kingston, that's kind of how he is in real life, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, like when I worked with him, I loved working with him. I thought he was great. You know, I'm a big Eddie Kingston fan. Well, but you anyways, good, you guys had a good back and forth. Yeah, right, 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 yeah, right. And he was hungry, bro. You know, and I was like, you know, go get your in, bro. And but anyways, uh-huh. uh. Um, good promo. I think they missed a boat in selling the effects of the fireball. Yeah, I totally and agree. Another problem is so, when they, they showed that in a slow motion replay, and they shouldn't have shown it from that angle because it was very obvious that the fireball just went over his shoulder, you know? I just I didn't understand why they would show that angle when it made it obvious that, of course, the fireball didn't hit him, you know? Maybe show right, it from so behind is, or something. If that's so, that's a big mistake, too. Next was uh, Hook and Dan House against Tony Nese and Mark Sterling. I tweeted this is brutal. While I'm watching this, this is complete. It's, th- these guys should not be. I, I don't understand what they're doing here. Like, n- none of these four guys sh- have anything to do with each other. Like, Smart Mark Sterling was with Tony Nice, and I'm, you know, and, and Dan Housen and Hooker together. And, you know, they get a pop from their audience, but like, these guys are like oil and water. It's not, 
you know, <clears throat> hooked suplex Sterling and played to the crowd and hooked to the throat slash gesture on Sterling and pointed to Danhausen and tagged him in. And Danhausen put one foot on Sterling while the referee made the three count. That's after they beat up Mark Sterling. And this was like, if anybody thought that Hook debuting, like, bro, remember about a few months ago, it was like Hook's going to be the next, like all these dirt cheat guys, because the guy had a squash match. They said he can't miss. He's going to be a big. And like, this is how you're booking this guy? He's like, come on. Um, you don't watch this, did you? I I skipped it, but I'm saying they're probably just setting up for the inevitable hook is going to turn on them. It's probably just going to take a while. Like oh, who most, cares? Of, most of their stuff. Nobody. I mean, like, well, because you know, the fans really Danhausen like. Guy's not. He's a why goofy... would you turn hook anyway? Right now? Not right now. No, but eventually he's super him, over, can... bro. There's no reason to put them together. But I don't know if they're in their mind. They're like, let's you know the old opposites attract. You know, let's put them together. But hook don't need Danhausen. Danhausen is over with the fans as some sort of cult underground thing i still don't understand yeah. uh i think he's supposed to be maybe like a a funny character that i don't know like, this uh, is kind of like, nerdy for me like too nerdy Beetlejuice for me to, or something i don't i guess but whatever they like him okay right. and they like hook but i think hook's a mega star by himself bro i don't know why you're diluting him with I, this I, guy I, right well, now. Bro, why are you guys using this term mega star I think you can make him a megastar. He's not going to get it. Bro, all these guys, it's like if they can't carry the mic, it's like I'm not going to like invest in them. It's like They got to show my good mic work first for me to think anybody's going to be a star. You know, we see who the stars are. The stars these days are the guys that are good on the mic. Right. You well, know, if like, you're not good I, on the I, mic, you're not really a star. I think he has know? the potential to be a megastar, and he could be uh, a guy that doesn't have to say a lot of words. Well, like I said, we, we if we put them in the proper – perspective with this guy and they book him right like i said if you if all these young smaller guys all these pretty boys are all wrestling each other over the girls it's like you got something there you know that's like you know but if like him teaming up with a guy that's putting curses on people and you're supposed to be uh, the son of a shooter mm. i'm like uh you know I'm, i don't know um <clears throat> so they open the show with wardlow versus mjf after all the controversy all weekend where yeah sure all the dirt sheet guys got everything wrong and thought that he was going to fly out of town or sean ross Epps said that a book a flight was booked for MJF to leave, and mm. they said they wasn't on the. It was, it was all. It was just tons of reporting this weekend. Just to yeah. Did you generate. see when MJF came in? He was doing like the airplane gesture, right? Uh, yeah, he's he's making fun of those. And people. Sean, Sean Ross Sapp is still kind of doubling down that he uh that he um was right by the way, which is pretty funny. Um, he's also so, uh, sending Mark Madden some angry DMs. If you didn't notice, Mark commenting yeah, about that. Yeah. So next is uh, so but this went basically the way it was supposed to. Wardlow squashed him, gave him ten power bombs, and pinned him. But this, but I didn't realize this. This okay. Th- this whole angle, this long term thing is like I, I didn't realize this. Like that Wardlow was not a member of All Elite Wrestling. That like he won the match and now he became all. He's a member of All Elite Wrestling. Like that. That's what this whole thing was about. Did you, did you see this? Uh, yeah. Tony? I didn't know that that I mean, was a part of the. I didn't know that was a part of the story at all. That was the whole storyline. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that's what, like really they were saying that he actually was not a part of all elite wrestling until this. Yeah, because he when was, when he was with he was part of yeah when he was with MJF he was under contract to MJF supposedly. So now yeah, but he's wrestling all he these matches. With, yeah. Well, I'm this, sorry. <sighs> yeah, it's a, a li- it's silly. You, you, you got to kind of give him a little bit of creative uh, uh, yeah, yeah, to, liberty license there. on this, right? Yeah. Uh, so but this, um, the, um, but, 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 the other- just one thing after the match. So they stretch him out and to make it silly. They put the, the 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 oxygen mask over his face when they were stretching him out, mm, which right. was so. Which, I don't know. And they and they just the thing was the match ended, and literally within thirty seconds they wheeled the the, the stretcher out, put him on the stretcher, wheeled him out, and put the, put the oxygen. Mask. Why so would it like, be silly to give somebody an oxygen mask that got power bombed four times? Because <laughs> he wasn't having trouble breathing. I mean, Maybe like, he you know, was <laughs> punctured a lung. <laughs> Bro, this was done so poor. That, like I, I wasn't. Said, the I deep... wasn't against the oxygen mask. So yeah. <clears throat> okay, I was very. It wasn't done with a lot of detail. Well, the they one thing they out, did put him on the stretcher, put the oxygen, and just rolled him out. So it's like you know. Yeah, I think right. you're being a little nitpicky there, but I do think that uh, w- what they wanted to do, they did. They uh, got Warlow over, you know. Right. And when he did the first power bomb. Bro, his facials were great. Yeah. Um, and you got to give MJF credit, bro. He went in there and basically got squashed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so next was the Young Bucks against uh, the Hardys. The Young Bucks come out to Elvis stuff, and they come out with their boy, Brandon Cutler. Um, 
Okay, so was he supposed to be leader or something like that? Yes. Oh, right. is that what he's supposed to be leader? Yeah. 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 All right. Whatever. Um, all right. So the, so they worked around the Hardys for the most part of this match, but when it got down the last five minutes, they started doing all the silly spot. Uh, your, your typical fans of this, like the false finish spots, the super kicks, the no selling boom, and, and all that stuff. And uh, but basically, um, I was surprised that they put the Hardys over in this. And like they looked rough, you know. Jeff surprised. looked rough, and Matt Hardy looked. But but um, I I'll I thought, tell you why. I'll tell you why I wasn't surprised. Because as you know, the young bucks grew up idolizing the Hardys, and bro, what better way to show their love for them than putting them over? And that's right. a sign of respect. That's why I love the young bucks because I they're really like that. They don't. And um, I just thought the be the first half of the match was really wasn't that good. I don't know what the. F- was wrong with Jeff because you could actually see a couple of times Matt telling him his spots. Yeah, so I don't know if he yeah. forgot them. I don't know well, what the he, was going me, on. Here's what I heard. Yeah. Meltzer said that he's beat up from the match he had with Darby Allen. Yeah, and right. they, they actually so he went into this hurt and beat you know whatever. So it's like yeah. you know, and well, he, was, he definitely picked it up at the end because when he did that Swan Tom bomb on the ring steps, mm-hmm. you know, and he, he did a couple other things, you know, kudos. I, this was better than I expected. Basically, because of the second half, the first half was really bad. Um, and they and actually, the, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say they actually pulled Jeff from his match on Dynamite too that he was scheduled for due to the his physical condition and whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just think that's the Young Bucks showing respect. So next is the worst match on the show: Jay Cargo versus Anna J. Mm. This was not good. Um, I'd, I'd love to know what Meltzer's rating for this match was. Uh, they're not out yet. Because this had this had miss spot after miss spot. Even the spots that were the worst. She, there was a spot where Anna J was on the apron. Cargo was in the ring, and Anna J does a back kick, and it was very slow. And she like lightly slapped her leg. It looked so phony. Mm. It's like you know these. And this whole slapping the thigh. It's like if you're green and you do it, it's very obvious and it looks terrible. If you're if you're experienced, you can do it fast. At least it looks better. But like when these girls try to do this, it's like eh, it's awful. But Jay Cargo won because uh, Stokely Hathaway walked out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a guy from uh, Malcolm Bivens from NXT. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Now he's with her. Oh no, no. But here's the thing. That's probably a good pairing. I, after the match, Hogan and Velvet uh, held up Jay for Cargo, and Chris Statlander ran out and stared down the heels, and Velvet got in the face of Statlander. And then Ember Moon makes her entrance, and she entered the ring and stood between Statlander and Jay while squaring off with Cargo. Ember Moon. And they, there was no physicality. They all had to stare down. They all leave the ring. What did you think of this? Um, well, they're both green. I'm not a big fan of Jay just beat Anna not too long ago. Why would we want to see a rematch? Right. And you've got so many other girls on the indie scene you could bring in for Jay to eat up. Why, why are you putting it against another green girl? Yeah. Having said that, Anna Jay's incredibly hot. Yeah. Uh, there's no reason at the end for that Malcolm Bivens guy to come out and distract, uh, you know, uh, Anna. Anna Jay. Just beat the beat her clean, bro. She's not even on Jade's level. And so I didn't like that. I always hear this guy's supposed to be a really good promo. I've yet to see that. Maybe we'll see him here. Um, Ember Moon or Athena, whatever f- name she's using now came out she's acting making all these weird gyrations and i was like i'm not sure are you supposed to be part creature or some I, i'm not sure what was going on there that looked kind of spazzyish actually, but was not a fan of this match yeah i actually skipped that i didn't know uh she debuted so that'll pack up that division a little bit more so next is uh the, no, the house of good black. talent that's yeah. for damn sure she came from the house booker, of- booker t school right yep yeah the House of Black versus uh, Death Triangle, and I would have, I could have probably told you based on what they've been doing on TV. What do you think would have been the finish of this match? House of Black wins. I would. Well, no, I would have think that Julia Hart was going to have oh, something oh, to do with this because yeah, yeah. they. So they do the thing at the end where the lights went out and they turned on, and Julia Hart was in the ring. And she blew Miss in the face of Pack, and then and the heels go over. So I was like, whatever. Um, this is a spot fest, so you know, I didn't, I didn't, I. I I was watching this, but I think I went downstairs and got something to eat and stuff, so I, I wasn't paying too much attention. Yeah, this was a nonstop. Obviously, I watched it because I knew it was going to be Lucha-centric, which is what I like, and so it was. It was a really good, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, like a spot fest. <clears throat> the fans are liking it because it's, you know, it's a different type of match with a lot of creativity. And then, of course, you know, we they did the 
the Alexa Bliss Jr. thing with the mist now, uh, Julia. Mm -hmm. And so now ooh, she's going to be with them. She, I, I have not found her to be intriguing or entertaining thus far. Let's see if she gets some more personality with these guys. Um, next is Cole versus uh, Joe for the Owens Hart Cup tournament. Um, Cole goes over. I mean, I knew he was going to go over in this. Uh, See, I, I thought mean, differently. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not interested in this tournament at all. I'm I thought like, they would have, uh, yeah. to make it feel good and everything, I thought they would have had the baby faces win in each match. I was surprised the two heels won, you know? Yeah. Well, not, no, because it was a husband and it wife. Husband so and I wife. think they wanted to, yeah. Um, I think that, you know, they were doing a good job of, of selling that, sh you know, Joe had a bad shoulder during the match, and there was no reason – uh, for Bobby Fish to come out, you know, mm -hmm. and just put Cole over strong doing something to the shoulder. I didn't think that was necessary at all. Um, I was expecting a, a better match than what I saw. Let me put it to you that way, not because I'm a big fan of both. Yeah, and I also um, would have expected I was kind of underwhelmed, huh? I also what? would have expected Joe to win because, and without a doubt in my mind, Tony's going to lead to Punk versus Joe the rematch after 20 years or whatever. Like, so they, I thought they would keep Joe strong. To get him ready to go into that, but well, this why would why would him. they book Punk versus Joe after twenty? Years? Like that's because, dude, it's that fan base and Ring of Honor, and they had the five star match in two thousand five and all. That. Trust me, it's that's what those fans want. They want to see yeah. Joe and Punk again. Yeah. You are well, you're right. They, yeah, He's well, right. That's not, that's not smart booking, in my opinion. So if you're gonna, if if you're if you're looking at that. There's literally no reason whatsoever to Joe to go under here yes. at all. Because right. like, we've because you know, we've always said. That he caters to his hardest core fans. Yeah. yeah. So next was Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho. I'm not interested in this. Another tournament final. And you knew you knew that after Adam Cole was going to win, right. that she was going to win because yes. the husband and wife would. But they are they married? Yes. Or they, okay, that they would they would be together. So and you know, <sighs> so after the match, Baker approached Soho and held her hand, and she took it. Then Baker pulled her to his her feet and headed the stage where Tony Schiavone was standing next to the podium. Adam Cole came out and kissed her. Uh, then Martha Hart was introduced by Shafani. Tony Khan escorted Hart onto the stage, and Hart turned and hugged Khan, who kissed her on the cheek before heading backstage. The crowd chanted, Owen and Martha bobbed along mm. with him. Wow, thank you so much for that warm welcome, Hart said. The fans, Cole and Baker, cheered, and the fans followed up with the thank you, Martha chant. Thank you, thank you, Hart said. Hart read from her notes and spoke about the craftsmanship and talent of her late husband. Uh, she thanked various people from AEW and her children. She said the partnership was a match made in heaven. She referred to Colin Baker as a king and queen and spoke about them taking their spot on a royal throne. Hart said the Owen Hart Cup was theirs to enjoy until the, they meet again. She noted her Kentucky Derby style hat and said she hopes to see more of them next year. Hart presented special title belts to Colin Baker. Did you hear that Tony Khan actually allotted an hour for this because he wanted to give Martha Hart as much time as possible to talk and say whatever she wanted to say? Uh, I had no doubt. I read some Meltzer reported. I'm like, are you kidding me? And they said because of the extra time, they got to add some time to. I, I don't know. It's just like I, when I read that, I was like, you got a whole hour of TV time booked for a Martha Hart promo. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, um, bro. And that they, and if you notice, they they use the same finish that Owen and Brett did in WrestleMania with right? that reverse victory roll thing. So they're definitely doing a yeah. I remember that very well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a fan of punk, but I thought it was kind of cool, rancid, uh, bringing Ruby out. I'm just, bro, I just think Brit didn't. That wasn't rancid. That was, that was Rich. That was one of Fozzie's guitarists. Oh, I thought it was rancid. Rich, Rich no, Ward. That's Fozzie. Rich Ward, okay. yeah. Yeah. Still sounded good. Didn't you, uh, the, I think there was a story in Brett's book, Conan, that you taught him one of those cradles for a finisher. Was it Was it the I, Owen match or was I, it? I think he made it up. Big old match? And so, oh, he made it up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, here's the other thing. Uh, I just think that Brett is very over and you needed to make somebody new. And I think they should have made Ruby here because really the, uh, the women's division is just really three women. Jade, as it should be. Thunder and Britt Baker, and that's about it. And nobody else gets any other. Maybe Serena, but you know, I just thought that they should have made Ruby here. You know, there's um, a lot of them treading water. Ruby is Tony Storm a little bit. You know, all the ones they bring in just seem to be treading water. Um. So next was a six man. Uh, I, you know, we're, everybody's a heel except for Frankie. 
Um, Sammy, Frankie, and Tay Conti versus Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and Paige Van Zant. Um, I didn't. I, I missed this for some reason. I just saw the end. Where uh, let me get to get to the end. Conti got in Kazarian's face. Guevara tried to super kick Kazarian, who ducked, caused him to super kick Conti. The crowd popped for that for the first time all match because nobody was cheering for this. I guess because like. All, they're all heels, wrestling shows. There's no baby face in there except for Frankie. Uh, Kazarian tossed Guevara to ringside. Page threw roundhouse kick at Kazarian. And this guy hit him with his TKO finisher and scored the pin. Uh, Excalibur said Guevara and Kazarian can never challenge Sky for the TNT title ever again. All right. Um, I, I missed this. Who took the pin? Frankie? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You, know, gonna, you know who they're going to beat here. Yeah, it sucks. Um, would you watch this, Conan? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why Paige Van Zandt, or was that her name? Yeah, Paige Van Zandt, was wearing the same fishnet that that Tay wears, as if she doesn't know she wears that. But mm-hmm. uh, um, this match was all over the place. It didn't really have a lot of logic, a, li- a lot of psychology, and uh, I did not think it was a good match. Having said that, um, it was very hard for people to get into the match because almost. All of them are unlikable characters. So who are you supposed to cheer here? Page nobody looked, cheered. For, they didn't cheer for anybody. <laughs> right. Page, <laughs> pa- yeah, Paige looked better, way better than I expected, except for this one spot where she took down um, Ty and and grounded, pounded her with elbows, which looked super weak, and they had to go to a wide shot. But she did good. You know, in, in general, she did good. Sammy and Tay come off as stars, which sometimes is more important than the match. So, but right. it was not a good match. Um, next was actually not a bad match, but there was really no build up. Darby, Darby Allen versus Kyle O'Reilly. These guys were good together. Yeah, very um, physical. Kyle's really good. Yeah, yeah. good, good match. And you know, I, I've got no problem with the match for, for entertainment. This match is fine, but it's like you know, Kyle beat him clean. And it's like this wasn't like and I'm not you know it's like I'm not I'm not a fan of like okay, this match did, 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 did literally nothing for Darby I mean like he just got went up there it was a cold match he got beat clean and it's like you know all right that so, was a problem you- this was a cold match so you couldn't get into it the match was really good really physical Darby was throwing himself all over the place like right. he always does has shown to be a, a great in ring performer I was very surprised that O'Reilly went over because the big star is Darby Allen. You know, O'Reilly has zero charisma, but I, I, w- I was very surprised. They're pushing him, pushing him pretty strong. Yeah. He's a lot of TV time. He's yeah, he's a lot real of good. Time. He's real good you know? in the good. ring. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, so, yeah, good match. There was this one part where I think it was a kick. He kicked him in the mouth and he was bleeding. So it was a physical match. Uh, Thunder Rosa versus Deeb. I was not interested in this. Yeah. Um, Thunder Rosa goes over. I mean, you got any comments about this? I don't really care. Well, I watched it because Thunder Rose is my girl, but I thought it was too long. Uh, this is a good match, really technically, really good. Deeb is a is incredible technician, but the problem is she has no charisma. You know, Rosa has is a really fi- is like a real good uh, has, shows a lot of fire, but she doesn't have enough. So for the, both she of them. got the Latino element. You know, she's a yeah. fire Latina. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't. She so D brings it down because she doesn't have any charisma. I thought that match was too long, but it was really good. All right, so this next match started with the uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society in the big brawl against the uh, uh, the Anarchy and Arena match, whatever it's called. And when they came well, out together, like all of them dressed up in white like that, like they were going to paint a house, I thought <laughs> I was thinking of. They were going to break into everybody, rock your body. So, so let me Nothing. tell you what happened here. I started watching this. They started bleeding all over the place, bro. I, I fell asleep during this. If you can, we can, if you can believe really? that, I fell asleep. Um, I'm watching them bleed, and I'm like, dude, the. It's like you got it. This is 2022. You can't be in the stands bleeding all over the place in in, in there with the fans. That, that's, that's, that, that's ridiculous. I mean, you, you, I mean, come on. You gotta be kidding me. You think this, the fans want to get blood up your blood on them? <laughs> that's just, I mean, I, I'm like, well, what, what are they? I mean, what, what are you guys doing here? Some people, well, some people like, take that as a souvenir. I, I swear to God, they'll get blood. I mean, that's on fine, shirt. but that's just not, you can't, you're going to sell this to advertise. Like they're, they're going to look, it's like watching guys bleed all over the place. They're in the stands bleeding on the fans. I mean, that's a criticism, but it's like, it's definitely a man. I mean, from a philosophical standpoint, I can't believe they did that. You know, like there's something, bro. This is true. Twenty years later, we wouldn't have done. Like in nineteen two thousand one, we wouldn't have thought of doing this. 
where it said we can't be bleeding in the stands. It's like this 20 years later, we're bleeding in the stands. It's like, come on. Well, uh, so what happened in this? ECW would have done it, and Tony's ECW. Bro, that's 20 something about, years ago. I know, Joe. I know, but I'm just saying. It's like I'm the saying rules that's have changed. I, yeah, the know? rules have changed, but he likes what he likes, and he's trying to bring back that ECW, Ring of Honor, Nitro, combine them all in the one thing, kind of. What did you think of this? I'm not a big fan of these type of matches, but the fans loved them. Uh, I thought the, um, you know, they did a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, they did a good job of following them around. You know, they they did the they they can't they did kind of a little homage to the Memphis um, concession stand concession brawl, stand brawl yeah. when they went in there with the mustard and all that shit. Uh-huh. And uh, they did this thing where Santana Ortiz had like ladders side by side, and they drove into the two the. They used to be the 2.0 guys through tables. That was a good spot there. Um, uh, I like to finish using the ropes and the Boston Crab at the same time to choke them out and use a crab. I like that. Um, you know, but fans like this. Everybody was bleeding. I like the part where Eddie was coming down with the gas tank, with the gas can in his hand and yeah. poured it over them. And the guy slapped the thing before he lit it. That was well done. Let me ask you guys um, because there's been a lot of talk about it on Twitter and stuff like that. That you know we got Eddie's got to be pushed to the title now, push him to the top. Would you guys think that that's who? logical? A lot of the fans want to see Eddie Kingston pushed up top to the title. No, absolutely not. <clears throat> I figured you'd you, say bro, that. the guy needs to get in shape. Yeah, do not push a guy that does not get is not getting in shape. You can't do that. It's like that. That's a, that. You know, the bro, that, that's the only thing holding this guy back. He needs to get in shape or better shape. You know what I'm saying? That's in period. I mean, that's like bro, people don't like, give. You know, a- about that right they like I, him well i think people do and there's the people that turn the channel Maybe. like those are the people that they care about this and they don't like seeing you know i'm i'm just telling you I, I, there's a lot of reasons these guys are not drawing a million people a week and I, I think that's one of the reasons you know is the presentation of the characters the physical look what they're wearing what they're wearing when they come out for promos what they like it, it's it looks it looks like like I said, we we call them the Kmart divas and stuff. They bro, these these the, the the people in WWE look like they shop at Saks Fifth Avenue. The people on this show look like they shop at Target. Okay, and it's like that you can't pretend that's not the visual picture when you're watching both shows. Okay, because that's what it looks like to everybody. Yeah, but those and whether you they're, care they're, about it or not or not, but I say there are a lot of people that care about it. Yeah, they're the people that are not invested in it. And they're they, they've chosen not to get invested because like the, if the characters are not going to treat themselves like stars, why do you think you're watching stars? Why would you think that? I'm like, hey, these are stars. Let's watch stars. It's like, God, oh, this guy. They're looks like watching a star, him because you know? a guy does killer promos and he has a believable character, not because what he looks or dresses like. They don't give a f- about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he Obviously, wasn't... he would look more like a star if he did, but it doesn't take away from the fact that that character he's playing, he does a good job at it. He does you know, a good job. Some... Thing is, is increase. You're, you're like increase your brand. Ch- ch- look, try to look more the part. It's like because you're kind of, you got it on the mic. Nobody's arguing that you guys great on the mic, but it's like I can't help looking at this guy. It's like he it looks like he's not in shape compared to the other guys, you know. And that's that's not that's a basic criticism that's very visible, you know. Yeah. And it's like I said, do something about it. If he doesn't want to do anything about it, and you're saying, well, his fans like it. it's like okay, well then you're not getting pushed higher. Because there's people that don't like that look, all right. So it's like you're stuck where you're gonna where you're gonna be. I would not. I would not. Uh, not. No. I would not. I would. You know what? I would put him against Punk because there's real heat there. They don't really like each other, and people mm-hmm. know that. And he's super over right now. So yeah, I would have no problem pushing him to the top against Punk. You're gonna like you're, you're gonna you're like. gonna put you're gonna put on TV. Okay, you're having trouble drawing a million fans. And the problem with drawing a million fans is you're not getting people outside the box. You're not getting new fans or anything. You're going to put that feud on TV and you think you're going to get to a million fans? I didn't say I'd get to a million fans, but you Well, might. that's the way we got to book. That's why they, they, they have to they take might, a book they the might, show. They might do really good promos. They might, you know, finally, finally, since Punk doesn't really like Kingston, Kingston might make him really go there where we want him to go. And we'll get some really killer promos. And if they can come up with some good ideas, you know, they could be a very interesting storyline. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, you can, well the thing with Kingston is you can do good TV with the guy because he can cut a ten minute promo. Like and then so we talk about the guys that look the guys that are stars come across. But like I said, you know, one of your stars needs to up his game his his physical appearance because he he can carry the spot on the mic. 
which we talk about is the most important. The, literally, the stars in these shows are the guys that are, uh, do good mic work. You know, so so let's go to this well, next. Thing. I mean, Kevin Owens has never really changed his look, and he just main event at WrestleMania with Austin. You know, and he's 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 used all the time in top angles by WWE, and he's not in shape or not in the kind of <clears throat> the kind of shape you're talking about. Uh, he's a better worker than Kenny Kingston, though. So mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think anybody's going to argue that. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is interesting. I, I didn't see this, but you tell me if this reads like like I, I'm reading it here. Footage aired of Andrade El Idolo and Jose sitting at a table. Andrade complained about his group being losers. Jose told him that he had his contract for his new business partner. And- Andrade said the person is his friend and one of the best in the world. And there was a knock on the door, and Jose opened the door, and then Conan's boy Roosh stepped inside. Andrade offered him a handshake, and Roosh stuck his fist out for the LFI fist bump. Whatever. The- what is the LFI fist bump? What, what am I missing? No, they're just putting their fist out like that, and they. And he welcomes the AEW. So Roosh is here. Okay, but let me read what Powell's POV says. And you tell me if there's anything to this. While Roosh is a talented guy, he was not the most popular fellow behind the scenes in Ring of Honor. People can change, but this is going to be interesting. Hmm. What do you think of this? Um, I don't know. I just think that a lot of people don't know who the f*** Roosh is, and they're probably wondering who the f*** is this guy. That's yeah. kind of what I thought when I saw it. So another lame... Pro, they, bro, they do these all the time, and I, I, I'm, you know, people call me a hater. Be this, this reads very lame. Okay, I'm going to read it to you, but this is what they said, and this is, I don't know why I'd be interested in this, right? Lexi Nair interviewed Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and Dan Lambert about putting their feud to bed earlier, and Page said it was good to be moving on to bigger, and better things. Sky wondered who would step up and challenge him for the TNT Championship next. Dante Martin entered the picture and said, just because Guevara can't challenge Sky for the title doesn't mean he can't. Sky said he's been impressed by Martin, but he's not ready for this. Sky told him to come to SoCal and he would give him a shot. He told him to remember that he asked for this when he was on his back looking at the lights. Are you, are you interested in seeing Dante Martin against Scorpio Sky based on this promo? No. Next is Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus against Ricky Starks and Hobbs and Keith Lee. Uh, I, w- I, felt, I, I, op- I, I saw the, the interview with Scorpio Sky and them, and I was in and out, and I fell back to sleep during this, and I saw that, I, and I was mad. When I woke up, realized I missed it, but not realizing that they didn't put Hobbs and Starks over, they put Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus over this. It's like, I'm like, what are they? What are they doing here? Scobs and Starks and Hobbs should have gone over this, in my opinion. What do What do you think? Um, this was a good match. This was actually a good match. Um, a lot of uh, kind of like action packed, and uh, and then I think they're still kind of teasing Jungle Boy and Christian Cage rivalry kind of thing because they were. They, they, there was a spot where each had distractions that that it could have cost them the match. You know what I'm saying? So something's been being being built up there. I'm assuming Christian's the one that's going to turn heel. Um, next is the main event. Uh, I missed this, but I saw some highlights. I saw Punk screwed up the book. But I, I think it was. I think they had a couple missed spots in this. Um. Which it's funny because like I want to, you know, Punk goes over. No, and there's not a single soul of the planet Earth that thought that Adam Page is going to win this match. Would you agree with that? The, the, yeah, I would. Okay. You know what else is entertaining? You know, Adam Page blocks me on Twitter. Oh man, what did you yeah. do? I don't know, but it's funny because Seth Rollins unblocked me. <laughs> well, we've 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 basically been critical of Adam Page's run as a, as a AEW World Champion. Yeah. Cody, look and see if he blocks you too. Cody, I wonder what you look and see if, if these guys block you. On Twitter, go to Angman, go to Adam Page, and look it up and see if he blocks you too. I, I, I wonder if he blocks you. He's because we basically say, we say the exact same thing about him. At the Adam you know, Page, at the Adam Page, look look that up, Conan. Um, so Punk Punk goes over. I guess it was a you know, but the funny thing is like this is the way the wrestling the wrestling fans and the meat of the dirt you guys treat this. Well, listen to this line, Powell's POV, a good main event. Yes, there were some slips. But they recovered quickly, and the crowd seemed to be getting more invested. And the deeper the match went, bro. If we sit, like I laughed, I've said this time and time again. If I screwed up a spot in a big match on TV, and I came back to the curtain, I was embarrassed. I was like, that's all I could think about. Even if the match was good, even if the people popped, it's like if I screwed a spot up, and everybody in the back saw it, I'd be like, man, every Kidman's going to be blistered. <laughs> Kidman's going to be making fun of me when I get back. You know what I'm saying? That that that's that's the way I thought. But like. These guys just kind of excuse spot when when they screw spots up. It's the wretch of the match is well, fine. I'm looking I, I at this Hangman weird. Page thing, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not blocked. As a matter of fact, he has a shirt that says, "I kind of like it." It says, "No hat, no cattle, all cowboy." 
Um, but that's and so I, I didn't get to see uh, the last three matches. Um, and I would like to also say that. But but but, but isn't it funny though? As long as the show, how long was the show, Joe? So it's like over five hours, right? Yeah, including okay, everything. Here, yeah. I, here I was. How, I'm sorry. How, what was the match? Entered, what was the match time in the main event? Just uh, tw- twenty nine minutes, I think. Okay. Let me read. It, it says uh, twenty five minutes and forty seconds. That's not bad. Okay, so what? But I heard it started after midnight. Yeah. Well, you remember make sure that uh, the playoff game was over. Right. But let me see. So I'll well, say this. Let me, let me, I want to read, read this real quick. It says, uh, Hangman Page writes, the guy who came to work on our air condition and stole my candy bar. There's no other possible explanation. I am planning to confront him. <laughs> then it says, can I still eat a Reese's fast break that I found in the back of the cabinet? It's like a month old and kind of softish. He put, I These ate These are his it. tweets? Yeah. I ate it. Not as good when mushy. Reckon it melted because our AC has been broken. Join me for AW Dynamite tomorrow at 8. I will be wrestling Kunisuke Takashita. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's kind of funny. That is pretty funny. <laughs> um, we got a, is this Nick Aldis? Nick is here, yeah. All right, good. So that's been our AW. Uh, that's been our double or nothing review. Yeah, and I thought it was very, very long. But it's just to the point that, like I was say, there was a lot of stuff I was entertained by the show, but I literally fell asleep. So that tells you how long these shows are, bro. <laughs> like I'm, I'm watching the show live, and I fell asleep after like like two and a half hours, three hours. Did, so it's did like, you, you see know, double fun. or nothing, uh, Nick, on probation, Aldis? How am I on probation? Wait a minute. You're still on probation from your falsehoods over the, the Mike Durbin uh, I mean, that's been a long, question. like, it's yeah, been a long, it's been a time. long time, but like you, you've never apologized for lying. Uh, you've actually been kind of like adamant that you didn't lie and you were well, more you know, Glenn, for were, someone, for, for someone who, who portrays themselves as this sort of crusader against wokeness and cancel culture and, Oh, this generation is so soft and, Oh man, man, people complain about everything too much. You are very, you very sensitive about people apologizing to you. You seem to sort of like to hold grudges against all sorts of people for the most minor of infractions. He's got I, a whole it list. seems to be very contradictory. I'm very offended. There you go. <laughs> 